Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The rising prospect Philip Hergovich as well as the rising contender Michael Hunter both return on the same card this weekend against different opponents uh, in Maryland, USA. This was the, the fight card that was originally headlined by Alexander Usyk facing Carlos Takam, but Usyk injured his right bicep, tore it, he'll be out for a number of months. But Hunter and Hergovich are still going ahead on this card, which is now being headlined by Devin Haney facing Antonio Moran for the WBC International Lightweight title. So uh, I'll start with Filip Hergovic and then on to Michael Hunter, who's also made some comments about potentially working his way to Anthony Joshua, who he almost fought recently, but dipped out to Andy Ruiz, who was the late replacement to face Joshua on June 1st after Big Pharmacy Miller failed multiple doping tests. So buckle in. Let's go. So starting with Filip Hergovic, who enters this weekend 7-0, Gregory Corbin is the opponent. Corbin, a 15-1 record. That most recent performance that he had was his one loss. That was against Charles Martin, a fight in which he struggled to some extent. It was a very ugly and bruising encounter. He landed something like 12% of his punches, didn't have a lot of success, and ultimately he was disqualified after repeated low blows. And I guess that's one of the things that uh, Filip Hergovic will have to look look out for from Corbin is potentially there could be if Corbin feels like he's um, getting dominated to some extent he may go into a shell and start to play spoiler which to some extent he did against Martin a very bruising encounter and bruising for more ways than one but um, Hergovic will have too much to outclass Gregory Corbin here I think we saw enough in that Charles Martin fight because Corbin ahead of that Charles Martin fight unbeaten 15 and 0 didn't really know how good he was 38 year old you know prospect to some degree hadn't been in with the best opposition but in that fight we saw his level and I think Hergovic with his skills and you know if he can fight from range for the most part he will be able to pack apart Gregory Corbin and I don't expect him to have too much issue getting past Corbin here but it depends on what's Corbin going to do is he going to try to play spoiler again especially if he's struggling uh, but Hergovic um, for his eighth fight facing a guy who's 15 and 1 in Corbin who's got a little something left in the tank I think that's not a bad opponent for his first fight in the United States. He, they've been moving him on at a certain rate, and um, you'd expect now that he's on this co-promotional deal with Matchroom, he is promoted by Team Sowell and signed that co-promotional deal recently, that they're going to, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, slowly progress him through the levels. And in the next year or so, he'll be a guy that will be starting to contend for some of the bigger and better fights in the division and potentially even a title. He believes that he can beat the likes of an Anthony Joshua or a Deontay Wilder right now. But then again, you know, a lot of fighters say these sorts of things, you know, to try generate a bit of profile for themselves and hype. But I guess with a guy like Hergovic, who's a very decorated amateur Olympic bronze medalist, and from what we've seen so far in his professional career, I think he could probably give both those guys decent fights right now. But he needs a little bit more time, a little bit more se seasoning. His trainer, Pedro Diaz, he's been working with Hergovic down in Miami. And I think we, the best of Philip Hergovic is yet to come. And we're going to get another indication this weekend of where he's at. It's his first fight for 2019. Hasn't fought since December against Kevin Johnson. Prior to that, it was a mere man saw. So I would like to see him a bit more active after this because it's uh, almost the end of May now and this is his first fight. And he is still, you know, considered, even though he may not really be a prospect, he is still in that prospect phase and he hasn't fought for almost six months. So hopefully they can manage to get him out a bit more often because he needs to be, I think, to generate the sort of profile that he will need heading into some of these bigger fights. Fights. You look at a guy like, uh, for example, uh, Joe Joyce, who's someone that I've been talking about um, in some recent videos. He's been out more frequently and his profile on social media and just among fans is, even though he's at a similar stage to Philip Hergovich, who was one of his contemporaries and a pair in the amateurs, Joyce's profile is above Hergovich's right now. So Eddie Hearn does need to do a little bit more to get him out a bit more active if he is going to be fighting in the United States. Hopefully we see him uh, every couple of 
the months for the rest of the year. But this fight with Corbin, I expect him to get through Corbin, possibly by stoppage or it will go to points, but he's going to take this one out. Moving on to Michael Hunter now, who will be facing the Brazilian Fabio Maldonado, who has a record of 26-2. and two. At this point in his career, Maldonado is certainly on the decline. He's uh, coming off two losses, one to the prospect Alexander Teslenko and also Oscar Rivas. They are both his most recent fights and in the past six months. He had been scheduled to face Nathan Gorman, but for whatever reason that fell through late and then it ended up uh, he fought Teslenko a week later. So while I expect that uh, Hunter is going to get through Maldonado here, I think this probably actually goes to points because um, Maldonado is extremely durable. Both those um, losses to Teslenko and Rivas were by unanimous decision. So I could see a situation where this guy sort of um, takes a bit of a battering over a number of rounds and it still goes to a decision. I think it's going to be very hard for Michael Hunter to get Maldonado out of there. He's shown that he is a very durable guy, even at 39 years old, still got the durability, has been able to outlast his most recent recent opponents and Oscar Rivas and Teslenko they do have some skills and Rivas especially does have some power and I think Rivas probably has more power than Hunter but I think yeah Hunter will actually sort of coast to a decision here against Maldonado he will move on um, to another fight and he's talking about the likes of uh, Anthony Joshua at some point so talking to Sky Sports you know about recently almost getting the Joshua fight he said they were close to using me because they couldn't find the right representative and I think I would have been the right representative but they found somebody better suited Andy Ruiz Jr he's no slouch and he's definitely a worthy opponent whatever people think of him eventually once I keep winning and getting better eventually I'm going to rise to the top on my own to get it like the way I was going to get it with the mishap of the big baby situation I don't think I'll get that opportunity again if I do get it it will be because I earned it and I took it from them and those statements there sort of touch on some comments I'd made ahead of the opponent being selected for Joshua that with Hunter having been a former cruiserweight you know he sort of ticked some of the right boxes to face Joshua but potentially he needed to, uh, to, to do a bit more at heavyweight to earn the respect of the division and of fans and I think what he's saying there is effectively that that you know he almost got it but for one reason or another they went with someone better suited, Andy Ruiz, you know, who's a fully minted heavyweight, who's got some pedigree, and that's not to say Hunter doesn't have pedigree, but at heavyweight, he's got less than half a dozen fights on his resume at the moment, and he's been working through the levels, and and I think Maldonado, it is what it is, it's a durable guy who give, you know, a little bit of credit to um, Hunter's resume, but uh, he's probably no better than Martin Bacoli, but he is better than the faded Alexander Ustinov, who Hunter picked apart and stopped in nine rounds towards the back end of 2018. He stepped in at late notice to face Ustinov, and actually Maldonado only stepped in at about 10 days here to face Hunter, so for whatever reason, they could couldn't get him a better opponent for this fight. There had been talk of Alexander Povetkin that he would potentially be the opponent, but that never came to pass. But Maldonado at short notice, I don't, I don't hate the fight. I expect Hunter to win, but it is what it is, and he needs to be out again soon because all that momentum that he was building up at the back end of 2018 with the Bacoli win, the Ustinov win, it sort of ebbed away a little bit. And if he is going to get these bigger fights in the division, he's got to be a bit more active and hopefully. The next opponent is going to be someone who we go, okay, that's a pretty good fight. But yeah, Hunter and Hergovic back in action this weekend. What are you expecting? Let me know. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.